when uh, this union, first of all, had a big strategic debate to, to consider, and that was about recruiting uh, part-time or auxiliary firefighters. Uh, and actually, initially, a minority of the union's <coughs> new leadership argued for that position against a lot of opposition from, or, from ordinary FBU members. Well, they won that argument, and as a result, the union grew very, very significantly during the Second World War. Uh, and came out of the Second World War in a very, very different position than it went into it. Uh, on top of that, at the, at the end of the Second World War, as, uh, as we know, that uh, you had what, what, what's called in retrospect the, the post-war consensus emerging, <coughs> a position where you had uh, new uh, politics, if you like, where trade unions generally, not just in the public services, but more generally, were accepted and, if you like, I suppose, given a seat at the table in many regards, and again, I think at that time, the, the, the previous work that unions had done in the Second World War put us in a, a strong position to help shape the, the new fire service that emerged after, after the end of the Second World War. And that was probably the fire service that I joined, the fire service in 1983. And that fire service that I joined uh, had been shaped by all those previous debates and by the role that this union had played in particularly in that post-war uh, uh, post period, all the structures, and we'll come on to those structures then disappeared by and large in many, in many respects, but those structures that emerged that shaped the fire service that many people in the room joined were shaped uh, in that period, and as a result of that, uh, of that uh, uh, discussion, campaigning, and so on. So the union, I think, it's, it's, all, it's impossible to separate the history of the modern fire service from the history of the fire brigade union. I think that's one of the things that, uh, that we're trying to explore uh, today, but also in our, in our build-up to our centenary. Uh, interestingly, when we, uh, we, and I know some of you were at this event, we commissioned a book about the, the Blitz and the role of firefighters in the Blitz uh, around the uh, commemorations of the Blitz a few years ago. And part of that, we came, in, in terms of researching that, we came across a lot of people who, and again, I think a fascinating aspect to this story, people whose uh, dads or granddads or grandmothers in some cases, but generally dads and granddads had been firefighters uh, in the Blitz and had been FBU members uh, during that period and who kept their FBU diaries, their FBU membership cards from all those times. So people in all different walks of life who had this little story about their uh, uh, recollections of uh, their parents and grandparents' role in the fire service and in our union. Uh, and we, we again we use that as an opportunity to have, have discussions about uh, our service and where it had been, uh, and so on. Uh, we, we we also played a role, and one of the themes of today's discussions a discussion in our service about uh, equality and diversity, a big theme for the past 30 years, uh, and one which, in our view, has been under attack for uh, several years at least. Uh, interestingly, uh, Theresa May, in a recent speech use that issue as a stick to beat the fire service with uh, and to, to, to give some criticism to this union. I think this union has a, a very proud record on that issue. Uh, but we want to make sure that is a theme of these discussions in the run up to the centenary uh, as well. Uh, you'll, you'll have seen the, the, uh, the, the, the speakers uh, and hopefully some of these themes will emerge during the course of the day. And again, for us, you know, there's people from different perspectives here. So don't want to get too controversial, but obviously a lot of those structures have gone uh, under the, under, uh, we've shifted from the sort of politics and structures we had in the post-war period to what people often refer to as a more neoliberal period where trade unions have been far more marginalised, where we have a drive towards privatisation, where that, uh, that previous approach has been pushed to one side, where public services are treated much more uh, in terms of uh, languages in terms of markets and so on. It's a very different world to the world that many of us joined in the Fire and Rescue Service. So for us, I think for the FBU members here, part of this is also about discussing the lessons we can learn from the past in terms of the challenges we face today. How did previous generations of firefighters and previous generations <coughs> of FBU members and officials deal with the different challenges they faced then? And are any of those uh, applicable uh, today? So, 
I hope uh, people, uh, this, is, uh, this is a first, we hope uh, if, if this is successful, and I think, I think it will be, uh, we, we will discuss following this up with other events uh, like this in the future where we can get a range of people uh, to come and discuss aspects of firefighting history, trade union history in the fire service and related issues. So uh, I really hope people have a, a good day and I look forward to it and uh, thanks very much. Thanks, Mark. Uh, we'll move on to our first speaker, Dr. Shane Ewan. Um, he's a senior lecturer in social and cultural.